Yo, what's goody fam? Welcome to the Human Behavior Mastery Podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about leveraging psychology to create a better business, a better life, and a better you. And occasionally I like to bring some of the most brilliant minds, uh, people who have deep expertise in different areas, because this is a platform where I ultimately want everybody to, to, to tap into um, becoming their best selves and doing what's required to do so. And so, you know, in that vein, I had to go tap into um, the credit hero because for me, financial literacy is something that's really important. Uh, some of y'all know I worked on Wall Street for 10 years, so I really got to see, especially being a kid from the Bronx, the importance of financial literacy. And so um, I got the credit hero here. He's going to give us some game. Uh, I got questions uh, from y'all for him. Um, but also just getting into not just where he is now, but sort of the the mindset, right? Because that that's the most important thing. So yeah, we got uh, Doreen Delavante here. My brother was good. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Doreen Delavante. I'm your favorite consumer law expert. I teach people how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit using consumer law. I'm also a business strategist and a growth specialist. For credit repair business owners, I teach them how to grow and scale their credit repair business using my four key principles, lead generation, lead conversion, client ascension, and continuity. Those four can scale any business. I'm also the president and founder of the Credit Summit, the only one of its kind catered to black and brown people where we teach financial literacy on a different scale, conference style, workshop, Everything included. So, yes, yeah, there's been a lot going on. Yo, there. listen, that's what I like to hear. We're going to get into all of that. Um, you just finished up? Yeah, the Credit Summit, we just did it, man. It was an amazing event. People had me crying on the stage, bro. People were crying. It was emotional, bro. I was like, golly. Oh, they caught you slipping on the stage. No, it's just a, <laughs> it's a testimonial. Yeah, no, that's lives real. Lives being changed. And when, when someone can walk up to you, total stranger, and say, yo, You've changed my family's life. And they brought the whole family and the baby. Wow. And all of them's crying. Like, it was, bro, it was a moment. Dude. No, that's changing lives. Yeah, man. It was. Whew. Yeah, that's changing a lot. No, that's it. That's important. Um, So I want to get into the consumer law stuff. I want to get into, like you said, you know, showing people how to get into credit. But I think more importantly is just understanding who you are and how you got into this work. Mm -hmm. Right? So. Um, so first tell people where you're from, cause you know, the, the accent is, Oh, I'm a real Island boy. All right. I'm from Jamaica. I'm not a fake Island boy. <laughs> 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 let's get that straight. <laughs> Let, yeah, let's get all of that part. Straight. I'm a real Island boy. Yard man. Straight from Jamaica. Um, grew up in Jamaica for 20 years, mm. left Jamaica, everything I knew, came here to the U S uh, didn't have any family, no relatives, nobody. I decided to take a chance on me because I had two younger sisters and my mom, mom of five, she wanted to send me to, to medical school. Mm. And I'm like, if I go to medical school, I'm going to wipe out everything that she got because Jamaica is not like America. You either got your money or you don't. Uh, so okay. she'd have to be financing me going through <clears throat> med school. And we would just... We weren't rich, bro. So I she didn't have that type of capabilities. And I recognized that. So I left everything that I knew to a brand new country to bet on me. Mm. To, 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 to create a different life so I could help my sisters and my mom have a better life. So, so let me ask you, because um, I'm always intrigued, especially with high performers, right? Like... Like you mentioned betting on yourself, where did that where did that desire come from? Like where did that mentality come from? So from when I was a kid, I've always I've always been not like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I was always reading. I'd what you'd call a like a book nerd or whatever they call those people <laughs> in schools. Right? Um, I'm always reading, I'm always studying. I like knowing stuff other people don't know. It's been a big thing of mine since I was a kid. And that's why that led to me being top of all my classes, graduating high school with the most outstanding academic performance and being one of the first from my high school to go to university. Mm. I just never finished. I came here. 
So I've always been intrigued with knowing things others don't know. It's just always been my thing. So if 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 I am able to educate myself, it means that I'll always be steps ahead of everybody else. So when when my competition is sleeping, I'm up reading. Mm. I'm up strategizing. I'm building out the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So what I'm hearing is you're just not you're not content or comfortable with I, I hate being, I hate that word comfortable so bad. And I say hate with a passion, all caps. <laughs> comfort <laughs> is the killer of dreams. Because mm. when you get comfort, comfortable, you get complacent. Yep. Complacency leads to procrastination, which is now the assassination of your destination. Don't want no parts of it. No, I got you. I got you. That's good. So you said you came at 20. Yep, 19 plus. And so what made you choose to come specifically to New York? Uh, I didn't come to New York, actually. I went to New Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire. Okay. Quite got the you. opposite. From got Jamaica. you, got you, got you. Okay. Ah, I was woo. skipping. Bro, my coldest memory of America is New Hampshire. It oh, is, so you went bro. from Jamaica to, to, the, to, the, to the Northeast. Mm. And what time of year did you come? March. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's still. So it's still it's frosty. Yeah, it's bro, still frosty. And it's New Hampshire. <laughs> so, you know, it's still wild up there, bro. There was snow on the ground. Is that the first time you saw snow? I, I didn't see it far. I saw it on the ground. Yeah, but that was your first yeah, experience. Yeah, my first time seeing it. <laughs> it was culture shock. Huh? It was oh, cu- it was quite a culture shock. My bones could tell you because they couldn't <laughs> stop shaking. <laughs> no, that's, that's real. I, I, I've heard people express experiences snow for the first time. And because... I wasn't dressed for it. I, I was dressed like this. Button-up shirt, jeans, and sneakers. Bro, I'm I'm going into five degree weather in that Jamaica. That's all we wear this, so I don't have no winter jacket, no wind, no no. Um, what's that thing called? Silks. Mm-hmm. I had no silks on. I had no winter boot. My toes were cold, bro. It was rough. And you came by yourself. Yeah, it was me and my boy. We um we came up on a school work and travel visa. Mm. So we came here. We came here by ourselves. And so you came here for school or for work? No, for work. Because back home, you're able to get, um, what is this called? I think it's called a K-2 visa. That K-2 visa, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's been years. I can't remember. But I think it's called a K-2 visa. If you're a student in a college, it gives you the ability to, to get on a foreign exchange work program. So basically, you sign up for the program, you go get the visa, you come over here, they issue a social, and you're able to work with that social. Got you. And when you came here, did you know that you was you wanted to get into finance and credit and stuff like that? Or no, you no, just no. you just came over here like I'm Yeah, I'm I just to wanted to survive, bro. <clears throat> I just wanted to make a better way for my mom and my sisters. So what was that first job that you had? Dairy Queen. Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen. Yep. Seven dollars and twenty five cents. Glen, New Hampshire. Can never forget it. Seven dollars mm-hmm. and so for somebody listening, right? One, he had the mentality of, I'm a bet on myself. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what's out there, but I know that there's something out something there for me. Something else is out there because poverty ain't it. <clears throat> I've been poor, and I'm telling you, it ain't it. Because there's some people that feel like they have to see everything, and they have to know all of the steps before they take. Tell them to keep waiting. I'll just pass <laughs> them on the way up. <laughs> I, and this is, this is real talk. It's like, this is me talking to you as my brother and, and my sister. The pieces won't ever be aligned. And if you're going to sit and wait on the pieces to fall in place, good luck. Because you're going to be there for a while waiting when you could have been building that thing on the way. Yeah. So just being a self-starter, just, just, do take, it. just take the first step. Just, just do it. All right. So Dairy Queen, you said 725? Mm-hmm. Okay. So from there, what happens? So from there, I came to New York. I got a hold of my <coughs> godfather. Mm. And I moved to New York, got a job at Five Guys, got a dollar raise. I was now at $8.50, so I got a dollar and 25 raise. Right? <laughs> I thought I was killing it. I was, I was killing it. I feel it, you, yeah. Right? So um, working at Five Guys, I was the best fry cook on the line. I don't care what nobody want to say. I was the best. You got to shake that basket 19 times, that crispy golden 
look on the outside, soft on the inside, bro. I was killing it. Bro. But it was just sh- on the Cajun fries, your shake on the Cajun. Bro, I was nice with that Cajun. Because some, some people go too crazy with nah, the Cajun. Nah, bro. It's, it's, a li- it's, it's a flick of the wrist. <laughs> right? Like, like so so you, you, you'd you have, like, the, the fries, and, you'd like, you just... Just, just get that Cajun nice and light on it. You, you fluff it up. Another light layer, bro. It was, it was lit. It was, it was lit. <laughs> it, was, it, it was lit. I love Cajun, bro. I love not some Cajun, Cajun, them Cajun fries. Listen, still to this day, every bro, so often, love I, me some Cajun. I sneak fries. up in Five Guys and hit a little and Cajun. They give you a whole bag, bro. Go crazy, bro. Go crazy. Yeah, man. Five, so, li- shout out to Five Guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you listening. Bro, they gave That's my it. brother a chance, bro. They, they gave yeah. me a chance. So shout out to y'all. Yo, what's goody fam? Listen, I know, I know. I'm going to let you get back to the episode. But I wanted to take a minute to let you know about the Human Behavior Mastery course. Yes, we have a course that we put together for coaches, consultants, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I know you're listening to the pod and it's all of this numbers and the, the adaptive and the natural, the D, the I, the attributes. We put together a comprehensive course to walk you through exactly how to understand each one of the personality types, each one of the values, and we're going to show you exactly how to get the most out of each type, what things you need to avoid, what environments to put you in, and what pieces to put around you to be successful. So if you're looking at taking your business, your life, or your relationship to the next level, make sure you go check out the Human Behavior Mastery course. Back to the episode. So at that time, do you feel like you were driven more by not reverting back or escaping poverty or was it you were pulled more by the dream of what what could be so at this time <laughs> i was brainwashed because i joined the 40 40 40 club get a good job go to school get a degree um retirement i was in that mm. club because i fell into the brainwash of the system so at that time at that time um i was in five guys and then there was this dude his name was angel and he was in the military, and he was talking about the military. Then another dude came, and he was talking about the military. And I'm like, shit, I'm going to just go join the military. So I joined the military, and I've been in the military ever since. What branch? Army. Army cool. National Guard. Cool. So joined the military, got my citizenship. Because if you remember, um, I came on a visa, so I didn't have any right. uh, green card documents at the time. So I got adopted. Um, joined the military, got my citizenship, and then now um, I went active duty on the military. So there's a thing with the reserve called um, active reserve, where you're in reserve status, but you're able to get active <coughs> duty job inside. Mm. You don't have to deploy. So I did that for a few years, and I believed in the, the 40 hours a week, um, the 40 years, the 40% get your retirement, all of that 401k, thrift saving plan, all of that stuff I believed in. Right until a cold December woke, woke me up. I like cold Decembers. Cold Decembers are wild, bro, because it can either make or break you. And boy, <laughs> did it break me. <laughs> <laughs> so the, what happened that December is I was supposed to get a job with New York City, the Environmental Protection Division, mm. um, for hazmat. And putting all the paperwork, everything was great. We're starting you out at $65,000 a year. I was like, wow. Like mama, I made it, right? Yep. Like I, I was I was I was city job. Everybody wants a city Benefits. job. Benefits. Benefits, all of that stuff. And so I put in my for my two weeks with the military because I was supposed to start that December. Mm. And then I put in my two weeks notice, started training my replacement. The city told me that the spot is no longer available. The job is no longer available. And you put your two weeks in already? Yep, training my replacement. Mm. Did you try to go, you try to spin the block on the military? I did, but it was too late. I started, tra- <laughs> I started training my replacement. <clears throat> mm. uh, then, But you see, I didn't know at the time that sometimes you got to go through some things to mm-hmm. get to your things. And I didn't know that God was setting me up for something better. So I just, I was angry. Mm. Like I'm doing it right. I, I I did what you said. I got all the qualification. Went to all the hazmat schools. Got all the credentials I needed. What do you mean the job's not available? You did everything that you everything were supposed to I do. Everything I was supposed everything to do. Everything they told you to yep, do. Everything. I know one. Of, I've had one of those moments, so I know exactly. I was, bro. I was angry. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I'm and and now I trained my replacement. My replacement left their job 
to get this job. Mm. So there was no going back for him. Oh, he was locked in. Yeah, he was locked in. So now I spoke to the commander and he decided to grant me a 30 day because it was Christmas and he saw the predicament I was in. And um, he at the time said, we're going to keep you on for 30 days for the December because of the holidays and mm. stuff. But come January, you're, you're going to have to figure it out. That's the crossroads. Bruh, I was angry. So I was Ubering. I went back to my security job. Like, it was, everything was just slapping me in the face, bro. Like, so what were you doing in the military? So in the military, um, it's a security job. So there's two different jobs that I held in the military while I was active. One was um, a security force. Have you ever <coughs> been to, like, Grand Central or yeah. Port Authority and you see the soldiers? Yeah. I was doing that. Ah, got you. Okay. Yeah. So I was doing that. I was on that task force. And then I was an advisor to the commander for hazmat response in New York mm. on the military side. So that would explain that. Correct. Got you. Correct. So now everything was just going crazy, bro. So I went to the barber shop. Angry, bro. Angry. And I'm getting my hair cut. And I heard this barber said that he just got a book for his niece. And the book is called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm like, what kind of dumb book is that? But that was ignorant me. <laughs> I was ignorant. I was just angry and upset. I did everything right. But see, I didn't know that I had to go through that thing mm -hmm. before I could get my thing. You, was, you were climbing. You had the momentum. And that was your first time, really. You kind of felt like you took a step back. A huge step back. You felt like you got. Because I didn't have no savings, bro. Mm -hmm. I was living paycheck to paycheck. Because people don't anticipate. You don't. Yeah, I never. You don't. Yeah. that's Somebody just asked me that the other day, and I'm like, I just don't feel comfortable giving somebody that level of control. Never again. No, but that's because we had that. We had to go that, through we that. We had that moment. We had to go through so it. So you get burned. Like, mama, I, I, I will never forget I was like, I cried. I was talking to my mother, like, but that angry, like, Bruh. I did every. They told me to work hard and do that, and the, and <laughs> I felt the tear, and I said, "Oh, it, it created a dragon Bruh. in me." Like, it's it's different. So I, yeah, no. And for those of you watching that can relate, y'all know that feeling. It's a. It's not you just getting angry. It's it's anger. It's just different. Yeah. Because everything. That you were told to do, you did. So you feel like you were playing a game and the game tricked you. Bruh. Bruh. Slapping a pimp slap in the face Listen. with a 50 cent ring on. <laughs> 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 so you had to say with a Snoop Dogg ring on. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it ain't a Don Juan. Right. You know what like, I'm saying? It was, bro, it was so, you in a, so you in a barbershop, and New York City barbershops are. Very special places. <laughs> like you get, I mean, you could come up on anything mm -hmm. in a barbershop. Mm -hmm. The types of conversation, <laughs> people coming through, trying to sell stuff. So you in a shop and somebody is a talking. barber talking. Oh, your barber's talking. Okay, yeah, yeah. Talking to the other barber that he just got a book for his um, for his niece called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm like, what a dumb book is that? He got two dads. Is he Gay or something. Uh, it was just me, just angry, bro. Just talking. <laughs> but my mind is so curious, it would not let me rest. Mm. So on my drive home, I went on YouTube and I said, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, audiobook. It came up, bro. It was the beginning of the best time of my life. Dude, after listening to that book, I listened to it six more times, bought the physical copy, read it back to front. It's the first book I've ever read. From cover to cover. Changed my whole life. The first book you ever read. Cover From cover to, to cover. Mm -hmm. 2019. And this is, you're in your 20s now. 2019. Wow. Mm -hmm. First book. Wow. I've read other books, but chapters and stuff. I've never read through a complete book. So pause right there, because I'm a, like, I love to read. Like, I don't know what it is. 2020, I read 140 books. 
Right. So that I'm, I'm about to go. Mm-hmm. What was that that switch moment? Because rich, sometimes rich, people rich like dad poor dad. No, but I'm saying psychologically, rich what? dad poor dad. That book unlocked something inside of me. I don't <clears> know. <throat> if that mm. book did something. I was hooked on reading every book from Robert Kiyosaki. I've read all of them. Mm. From Tom Wheelwright, from Jared Sutton, all of his advisors. Because some of y'all don't like reading. And I'm just saying, like, I've said it. He's saying it. Like, You want to hide something from a person, throw it in a book. It's there. So you went from not reading to reading 140. Wild. I went on a rampage, bro. Mm. Hungry. Bro, because Robert showed, like, I've always known these things were there. But I had no mentor to show it to me. And Robert Kiyosaki did. Mm. Opened up a whole new paradigm. And then I got introduced to Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. I was unstoppable after that. Mm. Ain't nobody and their mama could tell me that I'm not going to be a millionaire. And I think that's important because some people feel like, oh, well, I don't know anybody who's a millionaire or I don't. I don't live over there. I don't have access. I just heard, oh, no. That was my mentor through the reading experience. Yeah. I didn't know Robert Kiyosaki. I Kiss was up. talking to Robert in those books. I was writing notes. I was saying, hmm, when what, mm. Robert, like, this is how I'm talking. Mm-hmm. I made a character. The book became a person mm. that I'm conversating with. Yeah, I saw, I, I forgot where I saw, I saw something and the, the person was speaking about the concept of stealing people's 10,000 hours, right? Like, if there's an expert... On, on the low, bro. Stealing people's oh, 10,000 hours on through asking them questions or whatever, low, but low. a book a is one of the it's best the, ways. It's the ultimate it's like, way. It's like taking somebody's 10,000 hours right. and putting it in your hands and you have it as All a right. reference. Let me go on Amazon right now. <laughs> Let me see what the price of Rich Dad... Poor that is right now. That's yeah. good. That reminds me of when Hope said, I'm trying to give y'all a million Rich dollars worth of game out. for nine ninety nine. Six dollars, bro. So you get somebody's ten thousand dollars for six dollars. Six dollars made me a multimillionaire. Six dollars. Then they complain about I don't have the money and I don't, and y'all be buying fast food and all of this all the time. Six dollars made me a millionaire. Mm. Because what this book unlocked, it cannot be caged anymore. So talk about that shift between the old you, the angry, the... Yeah, that dude, who's and, that? And how it seemingly that overnight dude. you transitioned and something unlocked. And so talk about the transition and then that journey from there. So <clears throat> in order for you to get to that part, people have to start reinstalling new beliefs in themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So for a tree to bear apple, what must the tree be? Got to be an apple tree. Got to be an apple tree, right? Mm -hmm. Apple trees bear apple. So as it's in within, so Mm -hmm. shall it be on the outside. So if those things weren't in me already, they couldn't be manifested. You see, Mm. it's like an acorn that's placed on a windowsill. That's what I was. An oak tree was inside but it was not in the right environment for it to grow. So I've been on a windowsill for 19 plus years, 20 years, 25 years. I've just been sitting on a windowsill. But what Rich Dad Poor Dad did, Rich Dad Poor Dad was that crow that was passing, that saw me on that windowsill, took me up and dropped me in the forest. That's what happened. Mm. So now I was able to take root. Because now I was in an environment conducive to my growth. Mm. Which that ultimate hack, bro. Six dollars made me a whole multimillionaire. Listen, that right there, I'm always preaching environment, right? So and environment important. for in my opinion, people, places, and things. Mm-hmm. Right? But we have the power to choose. Like environment, like designing your environment mm-hmm. is at your fingertips. Absolutely. Right? So you can be intentional about the people you spend time with, mm-hmm. the places you go, mm-hmm. the types of conversations you yep. have. It's, 
you know, and I, and I, I could hear it even when you share your story. Sometimes you're around something that you think is normal until it's not. Mm -hmm. And you got to, like, there comes a point where you have to have the courage to say, you know what? Thank you for getting me to this point, but I need to go venture out and do something Seasons. different. People need to recognize <clears throat> when a season has passed and when that season is no longer conducive for their growth. Just like people. People are, are people come in your life for a season and a reason, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to recognize that you got to let some people go. Mm -hmm. Not everybody you start with, you're going to finish with. That is a fact. You cannot be Captain save -a You cannot save everybody. Mm -hmm. And you it's have to rare. recognize that you can only help people that want to help themselves. Because you cannot drag someone across the finish line that don't want to finish the race. They don't. Mm -hmm. You got to leave people to their own, I don't want to say demons, but you got to leave them to themselves so that if they are not willing, if they're not willing to say that I've had enough, if they're not willing to say that I've all my life I've been struggling, there got to be more out there. If they don't have that burning desire to want more, there's nothing you can do about nothing. it. Nothing. They got to have it. I agree. This it's a it's a choice. It is a choice. And it's everybody has the same power to choose. Same way poverty is a choice. I chose not to be I chose not to be like the common man. I chose not to bow to any master. I chose to be mentally unemployable. I chose um, uh, entrepreneurship or death. That was a choice. There's some people that want to be unemployable. So they don't want it bad enough. Because <laughs> if they did, they would have bought rich dad, poor dad. That's like I said a while ago. <laughs> they would have go online right now and text the word <coughs> FICO. F I C O to 917-993-5238 and get the book about credit that I wrote, how I built out an 800 credit score three times in one year. They don't want it bad enough. Because you see, knock and it shall be opened, seek and he shall find, ask and it shall be given to you. Mm -hmm. Closed mouths don't get fed. All right, so you just said the somebody wants to know how to get an 800 credit score. The credit is it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And they hear about people repairing their credit mm -hmm. and they hear about 800 credit scores, mm -hmm. but they might not be around anybody and they might not know that it's possible. I don't even like the word believe because believe implies that there's some doubt there, right? I know what's possible. Mm -hmm. You know what's possible and you know how to do it and you teach people how to do it. So walk the, the average person who may not have the best credit through the steps they need to take to get an 800 credit score? So the first thing I realized when I was deployed is that, bro, you need to step your damn game up, right? The first person I ever met with an 800 credit score was this white dude who was a major. First time I ever saw 800 credit score in my life. Never seen it before because nobody I was around ever had an 800 credit score, mm. right? So I saw that. At the same time, I started learning about credit. And what I did was, I, that same year, the same major, on deployment, I didn't even build my 800 in the U.S. I was in Kuwait building it, right? Yes. You're doing it on deployment. Yes, I did mm. that on deployment. So when <clears throat> I got the 800, I went back to the major and I showed it to him. I said, I have an 800 credit score too. I had an 805. And when I, the first time I saw it, I said, I would love to have an 800 credit score. And then a few months later, before our deployment was over, I was able to show him that I made it, right? So the environment that a person is in does not stop what they can do. I have students right now that's in prison, not only fixing their credit, they're fixing their buddy's credit in prison too. Don't ask me how. They got a cell phone. Just They got a cell phone. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got know. a cell phone. I don't know how, <laughs> what they're doing or how they got it, but they got a cell phone, but they're learning now that they need to change the way they do things. And I got people right now in my mentorship that's locked up, that's getting the sauce. I think so that is phenomenal. Where there's a will, there's a way. There is a way. But people give, a, a, they give 
a down payment on your life with an excuse which assassinates everything that they want to do because all they keep doing is trying. And if you try, 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 you will never achieve nothing. You're either going to do it or you don't. There is no trying. So going back to the 800. So what I did was I cracked the code to FICO, right? Um, on my deployment, I recognized a few things. A consumer report and a FICO score are two separate things. They are not the same. FICO score has five parts, payment history, utilization, age of credit, mixture of credit, and new credit. Mm -hmm. A consumer report is based off information that the consumer gives written permission for firms, banks, and other institutions to report. These information now gets collected by consumer reporting agencies, not credit bureaus because credit bureaus don't exist. They, got collect, they get collected now by consumer reporting agencies, and these consumer reporting agencies furnish a consumer report. But FICO, which is Fair Isaacs Corporation, <coughs> license these um, consumer reporting agencies to use their algorithm, their software, their proprietary technology for risk score to create the credit report, the credit score that gives you a list of information and they also give you the credit score. So when you go to annualcredit.com, when you go to annualcreditreport.com and you, hold on, one of my business partners is calling me. Guys, this is in real time. Just give me a second. Hey, bro, I'm on a podcast. I'm going to hit you right back up, all right? All right, cool. All right. So what happened is that Knowing the difference of how FICO operates mm -hmm. showed me things that I can now delete from my reports that's not supposed <coughs> to be there. Like, for example, late payments, right? So the FICO pie chart is broken down into payment history, utilization. So that's 35% for payment history, 30% for utilization, 15% for age, 10% for mix and 10% for inquiries. So 35% is equal to 192.5 FICO points. 30% mm -hmm. gives you 165 FICO points. Um, where are we now? We're at 15. 15% <coughs> gives you 82.5 points, FICO points. And then 10% give you 55 points. 10% give you 55 points. Together, you have 550 points because the credit score ranges from 300 to so 850. 850. Yep, okay. 550 <coughs> points. So when I figured that out, I, would, I cracked the code. So I know that there's no such thing as a late payment because transactions or experiences between the consumer and the person making the report are excluded from the consumer report. Right? Also, the only way a creditor can treat a payment as late falls under 15 U.S.C. 1666B, timing of payments, where the only way they can treat a payment late on an open-end credit plan is 21 days before the payment due date. They must send a notice to the consumer along with information required under Section 1637B and it must be delivered within 21 days of the payment due date. It must be mailed or delivered. So in order for a payment to be treated as late, they must be able to prove that those disclosures were delivered 21 days or less before the payment due date of the consumer they're going to put a late payment on. They cannot prove these things. Consumer reporting agencies cannot prove these things. If they, if they have the tracking number to prove it, then they need to provide it. They don't have it. So there is no furnishing of no late payment because without that condition, a payment cannot be treated as late. So when I figured this out, I know you got a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, my mind is going crazy. When, 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 when I figured this out, I removed the two most important parts of FICO. The payment history, which is 192.5 points, and the utilization, which is 165 points. I reclaimed 357.5 points. By reading. Correct. By reading. Okay, so you just said a lot. <laughs> right? You're going to have to watch this part over. Oh, yeah. You're going like, to have to you like, re remix and rewind this. We're, we're, we're third. I think I started at 30 minutes in the recording. So they're gonna have to go back and rewatch that. Oh, part. for sure, for sure. <laughs> so, so one, it sounds like what is being done to the consumer is predatory or illegal. 
most of it is illegal because the consumers don't know. For example, Wells Fargo <laughs> just got a fine <coughs> for three point seven billion for illegal practices, um, illegal repossession, illegal foreclosures, illegal late payments added to people's consumer report, illegal late payment fees. Bank of America got hit too, two hundred and fifty million for almost the same thing. Like they don't care, bro. So. As the credit hero, right, mm -hmm. and 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 I'm and I'm being mindful of this too because there's a lot of information floating around the internet. There's a lot of people who get taken advantage of when it comes to credit repair and mm -hmm. financial services in general. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it comes from the lack of knowledge, especially for Black and Brown people. Hosea four six, my people <clears throat> are destroyed because of a lack of information. Absolutely. So, at uh, you know, being in the position in the seat that you are, I don't want us to just talk about like this, like talk at people about this stuff. But what are the practical steps that people can take to protect themselves, right, and stabilize and then thrive from there? All right. <clears throat> forty seven and forty seven dollars is how much? Forty seven and forty seven. Mm -hmm. A uh, what's that? Uh, ninety four. All right. So we got ninety four dollars, right? I'm going to give them a whole play for $94 right now. Less than $100. <coughs> and they spend $100 on BS anyway. So for the person that wants to make a difference, this is what they can do. The first thing is the FICO book, right? The FICO book has letters and it has the whole steps of what I did when I was deployed with pictures to prove that I did what I did, right? So the first thing they got to do is take their cell phones out. Everybody got one. Text the word FICO, F-I-C-O, to 917-993-5238. That's going to give them my FICO ebook, mm -hmm. right? That book is going to, it's a manual. It's the exact framework that I used, mm. right? Now, late payments particularly takes a different type of dispute. Excuse me. And we've now cracked the code to late payment. The fastest we've gotten late payments deleted is in four hours. Okay, right. Because somebody out here is skeptical and they think yeah, he's talking be fast. He's he thinking he's talking go fast. To my, go to my Instagram. I got receipts for days. I got a community for days, bro. I don't need to be making stuff up. So for that, I did a whole live two on late payment. Go check out my YouTube. And there was the testimonials was right there. Yo, Doreen, we ran <coughs> the play. We used it. It's it's all there, mm. right? So for that, all they gotta do is text late payment. Text late payment to 917-993-5238. Yeah, we're going to put these links. So, so yeah. once they do that, they text the late payment, they text FICO for $94. That can put them at a 750 credit score. My ebook and the late payment deletion guide can put them at a 750 credit score. Even if they got terrible credit. Yeah, all they got to do is use the information in there. Is there anything that the information can't help them with? Well, as a man, think it in his heart, so is he. The information can only help those that want it to help them. If they believe it can, it can. If they believe it No, I'm just cannot, asking because you... I'm you, being real. Yeah, you said late People payments... People are their own limitations. If they don't put the thing to work, it will never work. I got you. They have to execute. Yeah. It only works if the person using it applies it. Got you. Because people believe that knowledge is power and it's not. Yeah, because execution and application of knowledge that's makes important. you powerful. So, <clears throat> how? Because you said as you you've seen results as quickly as for late payment. That's a fa that's a current record that we have right, right. Now, four hours. Typically, how long does it take for people's credit to repair? And I, and I know it can Every, vary. Yeah, everybody varies. It depends on what method you're using. There's different strategies. I only use consumer law. That's what I study. That's what I teach. Mm. And I've seen that we get the results faster than anybody else. And it stays off? Yes. And if they put it on, we have laws for that too. Mm. It's called, that law is covered under reinsertion of previously deleted items. Mm. So really, it sounds like a lot of this stuff accumulates on people's reports because they don't know. They're, they're either not aware there's a sense of ignorance, mm -hmm. but also the sense of being passive and not you know, staying up on top of that stuff. You know how expensive the ignorance bill is, bro? Listen. It's a hell of a bill. 
And bad credit is one of the most expensive life you will ever live. I know because I've been there. Mm-hmm. My first car was a 2007 Nissan Altima, 75,000 miles on it, 75,000. I couldn't even get a proof for it. I had to get a cosigner. I got, they, they charged me 18.9% interest rate on it. On a car with 70? 75,000 miles on it. Subprime lending at its finest. And what I didn't know, at the time I was in New York, see the maximum interest rate for New York is 16%. I was being charged 18.9. There's a law called the usury law. But see, I didn't know those laws existed or else I could have better protected myself. So I was taken advantage of. And for years, I paid that car off, not knowing my rights. Bad credit is an expensive life, and you will pay for the things you don't know. That is a fact. Now, one of the things that I, I always uh, you know, share with my audience is, is awareness breeds choice. right? You can't choose something that you're not aware of. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's one thing to be ignorant and not know. But once you become aware, mm-hmm. now it opens up a world where you have choices to choose from. When you know better... Yeah. You do better. There's a there's a life out there. Your dream life is out there. Oh, it's out there. You only don't live it because you're not choosing the choices. And you're not choosing the choices because you're not aware of them, right? And so bringing you to the platform, we're giving people access to more options to choose from, right? To information that they can execute on. You know what some of people's problem <clears throat> is? They don't use their imagination. Mm. Do you know that your imagination gives you the ability to take a trip in the future? See the future that you want. Come back to the present and build a life to go there. Mm-hmm. I know. I live it every day. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> but we're stuck in a, wor- a three-second world where all we're doing is swiping. We don't yeah. take time and meditate. We don't take time to really structure what do I want the next three to five years of my life to look like. What do I want the next 10 years to look like? We don't structure that type of stuff. We think about the, the right now. Oh, I'm living my best life. Cool. Guess what? I'm a grind for five years, but I'm going to have a lifetime of freedom while you have your best life now and you have to work your entire life. Mm. How long did it take you to actually go from wherever you started to the 800 credit score? Like how much time? Six months. Six months. And did you, was there something you wanted to, like, buy, or you just did it just no, to do No, I was just sick and tired of being, <clears throat> of being dumb, bro. I was sick and tired of being taken advantage of. I was sick and tired of being told no. No, bro, no. What do you don't understand? The N or the O, bro. So, like, I was getting no so many times. I uh, had to ask people to be co-signers for me, bro. I was tired of that life. Mm. I'm here saying that I'm a man. And I'm grown. I can't even get a proof for an apartment. You know how embarrassing that is? Mm. Asking your girl to co-sign for your apartment. Asking your friend to co-sign for a car for you. Like, I was tired of that life, bro. Mm. So I know I needed to make a change. And <clears throat> like Michael said, the change starts with the man in the mirror. And a new mind, a new life coming from a new mind and a new way of looking at yourself. You cannot step into your future while still looking into your past and holding on to the baggage of your past. You cannot. Hmm. A new life starts from a new mind. Be ye renowned by a new mind. The battle is in your mind. You go to work with it. You wake up with it. You eat with it, you yep. sleep with it, can't digest your food because of it. You are tired all the time. You're tired at work. You don't like the co-workers. You're tired of public transportation because there's bums on there that's just doing dumb shit, right? Your kids are exposed to this type of stuff. Like, there's so much fighting going on in the day. Even when you sleep and you wake up, you're still tired because at night now you're fighting with yourself. Because you know you're in a life that I want more. 
I'm experiencing an, 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 an avenue of life, a, a, a phase of life that is not comfortable. Why are your kids still in that neighborhood? Why? Why are you still in that same house? Why are you still content with not having enough? So, dude, when, 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 when I started saying those stuff to myself, bro, I know I needed to make a change. And the change happened when I decided that I need to become the change that I want. So you got the 800 credit score. So when, you're, so when you went to go get the job, you had the 800 credit score. Oh, yeah. So wait, 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 wait. You, you went and so you had the 800 credit score while you were still in the military? No. So the 800, let's go back a little bit. Are we talking the environmental job? No, when you were uh, when you were going to get the environmental job, and you said you uh, you went to get the environmental job. Yeah, that was twenty nineteen. No, I still had bad credit. <clears throat> you still had bad credit. Yeah, I still had. I had bad credit then. Eight hundred credit score came in twenty twenty when I was deployed. Also, they let you come back. Who? The military, yes. So when I got back, okay, no, that because that on different orders, yeah. Ah, so got it you, was got different you. orders. So I didn't explain that part. There's different orders for different things. So the Title Ten orders was my deployment orders. When I came back stateside, I got on Title Thirty Two orders, which were state orders. Got you. Yeah, it's got a you. little confusing. No, 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 no. I got you, but I was like, okay, so he. I was just doing the timeline thing. Yeah, yeah. So, when so I, how long did you stay in the military with the eight hundred before you left? Um. I'm still in the military right now. Oh, okay. I'm I'm National Guard, so I'm reserved to go once a month. Can't wait for that to finish. But that's another story. <laughs> Free that guy. <laughs> that's another story. So coming back now, right? Got an 800 credit score. Got over $150,000 now in available credit. I'm doing my thing, investing in masterminds, growing. Then now, um, like, God shows us so many signs, bro. And my, I was hard-headed. So now I got <laughs> back on active duty, right? Came back from deployment, got back on active duty. All right, still in the 40-40 club now. So it's like, I want to go full-time entrepreneur. I want to I wanna still stay where safety and security is, right? Mm, talk so, about that. Talk mm, about that. It's a lot so, of people there. So now I'm, I'm like, I'm having like this dance. Of, You're on the double dutch. Oh, yeah, do I want to go in this unknown or do I want to stay where they're talking about 20 years in the military, retirement, pension, all of that stuff, right? And then my first sergeant brought me into a room and he said, yo, you know, we have to let some people go. And the names that came up on the list was, one, your name is on the list too, along with 50 other people. I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, so the government overspent on the COVID budget. And we're going to have to let some soldiers go. Can you imagine? This is the same military that I just deployed for. Mm -hmm. Same military. Just gave a year of my life in Kuwait and Jordan. Right? And you're telling me you overspent on a COVID budget. Can you imagine the slap in this my is the face? This is the second slap in the face. Sec God, God is saying, bro, are you not listening to rain? Couldn't see it. Mm. So... Sometimes, like, sometimes you just got to get punched in the face, bro. Do you think it was fear or do you think you were just being gluttonous with, like, having both? You know, there's not a lot of people say, like, you trying to have your cake and eat it, too. Like, were you afraid to leave? Why can't I have my cake and eat it, too? If I got two cakes, I'm going to eat both of them. <laughs> 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 bro, if I, got I got one, if I got one slice, I'm going to slice them. In two. I, got I you. still got two pieces of cake. <laughs> no, it's not an either or. You can do all things, ladies and gentlemen. I like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My cake no, I was just trying to get a sense too. of where you're, yeah. Because some people are not leaving because they're scared. That's a problem. O other people, Fear. other False people, appear in real other people are juggling both, but it's going to come a time where you have to. You get tired. You get yeah. Out. So what happened? I got kicked in the chest. God kicked me in the chest. Leonidas? Oh, Porter! <laughs> straight in the chest, right? And you know what happened a month later? A hundred billion gets sent to Ukraine. It was right there. Right there was my switch. That part. When I got laid off, when I got fired, 
But then 100 million went to Ukraine. And I got nothing against anybody that's from Ukraine. I'm talking about my situation and how I got fired because the government chose to send the money to Ukraine. I'm. This is my So you just told story. me that I got to, like, I'm getting laid off because y'all And overspend. I deployed for y'all. But you spent money over there. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred million. I'm sure you're not the only person that feels like well, that. Well, I'm that's the only person that's talking up because they be thinking things, yeah. but they're scared to speak. This is my truth. Yeah. And it was at that moment I realized that whether I live or die, it means nothing to the government. It doesn't. I'm just another number. I'm a social. So then I took control of my own life. Mm. And I decided that. I am mentally unemployable. I will never work for anyone ever again in my life. And from that day? That day on, I better What day was that? That was October 1st of 2021, my national holiday. Like That's why that. I kept the conference in October. Ah, it's my national holiday. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like 175 that. people came out to learn how to become credit and financial literate. That's amazing. So you taught yourself, right? You did it for yourself, mm -hmm. and now you're teaching other people, other how, to people how to do that. Yep. I don't believe in giving people fishes. I hate giving people fishes because when you give people fish, you create a society of dependent people. Mm. You need to teach people how to fish so that they can fish for the rest of their life and teach your families how to fish. Mm. That is my belief, and that's what I learned from Robert, and I will not go back on my word. I do not give people fishes. So so the the summit is the main stage where you just that that's for the droves of people they can right. come through live real time real strategies real process and next year is about to be ridiculous and is it just you teaching or are you bringing other people I bring to other people I bring everybody that I know in from credit because we're teaching you everything credit business credit finances mm. it's like a whole Avengers assemble for credit. <laughs> it's like a whole I like that. universe for credit, bro. Yeah, he said, listen, I'm Thanos with all the... Uh, Infinity Stones. So, so there, there are people who are like, okay, you got my ear. Mm -hmm. What do I do? My credit is crazy. I want to buy a house. I want to I wanna free myself, but I just don't know how. All right. So before... You spend any money at all with me, any money, right? And you don't have to spend it. Like, whether or not, I'm still good. I still got my Rolex. I still got my Mercedes. I still got seven businesses. I, it doesn't matter if you spend it or not. But what will happen for you is this a change in your own life. So my YouTube channel, I got content for days. My free content on YouTube mm. is better than people's paid courses. Say that. Go to my YouTube, DoreenDelevante.com. I got content for days, so you will be watching me for months. I got that <laughs> amount of content. Free content. I got content there that will keep you binging for months, right? And then the ebook. Get the FICO ebook. It's for it's only $47. You'd use that on dumb stuff anyway. So why not use this as a pillar towards the next step, next phase, next season of your life, right? And get the FICO ebook. Learn the blueprint that I use to build the 800. You got late payments. Get the late payment deletion guide. So the FICO ebook, like I said before, you're texting FICO. You're sending a text message. F-I-C-O to 917-993-5238. And if you got late payments, text the word late payment to 917-993-5238. Get both models and go be great. For less than $100, you can go start the process. You don't even got to do that. You can go to the YouTube channel. Just subscribe when you go there. <laughs> Social currency matters. Is there is there, is there there a guide specifically on the consumer law? Because, or is it... If Define guide. Define no, guide. I mean, like you say, you got an a, a, a ebook for the FICO and for the late payments. Yeah, it's, 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 it's FICO with consumer law. They're both oh, so they're both in it. Okay, correct, good. Correct. Because it's, the way you explained correct. it, they're two separate things, so I just wanted to make yeah, sure Yeah, people. I use FICO because everybody's familiar with it and people need to know about it. Um, that FICO is a technology company, technology company that produces an algorithm to gauge consumers' risk. It is not your credit report. It's not. People need to know that. Is it's a difference? separate entity. Yes, and when we separate that, we comprehend that factors of FICO is not factors of your consumer report. 
Do you think there's an intentional effort yes. to keep people confused? And yes. Speak yes. about that a little bit. Yes. Double language. Mm. They use it to confuse you. They say one thing when they mean another. Credit bureaus. Where did that word come from? Because it does not exist in the FCRA. There is no word defined in the Fair Credit Reporting Act that's called credit bureau. It does not exist. Mm. Bureau is a word we associate with government. Mm. So they know that words are powerful. In the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. The word was with God. The word became flesh. The word is powerful. As a man think it. What do you think? Words. Mm. You cast these spells on yourself. Because as a man think it in his heart, so, so is, he. is he. So if you believe credit bureaus exist, you believe there's an entity that controls you. So now subconsciously, false evidence start appearing real and you fear these cooperations when they say verified. So when they it's say not the validated. government, these are private. These are private <coughs> companies. They have no affiliation with the government. Mm. Amazing. That's that people, it? it's, a, it's incredible. But they have the money to do the research. They have the money to hire the people that can do this type of marketing for them. Subconscious marketing. Experian boost. Experian gave people five points to report their own information. And millions of people ate it up. Yeah, I was just about to say, people Stupid. are supporting this these private companies that are being, you know, irresponsible, negligent, and predatory towards them. Right? So one That's what they see. <clears throat> so um, one of the things people talk about is like, does it like freeze in their credit report? Mm -hmm. I freeze all of mine. Freeze all of them. Everything, because when I need it, I open it. Oh, but so you that's your form of taking control. Like, listen, y'all have yeah. access when I say you have access. Goddamn right. So, so the data aspect of things, like how much. Like, because there are people selling your data, so they aggregate and buy all of this data, and they're the ones that are sharing it with, mm -hmm. with these different agencies. So you can opt out of having your information <laughs> reported, and a lot of people don't know. So 50, how would they go about doing yeah, that? Yeah, 15 U.S.C. 6802B. It's an opt-out under the gram leach Bailey Act, which gives the consumer the right to opt out of having your information um, reported. 15 U.S.C. 6801 talks about the protection of non-public personal information. So those two laws speaks about the protection of it, the ongoing obligation that they have to protect the information of the customer, and then 6802 gives the consumer the right to opt out. Okay. So the pros, are there any are there any cons to, to freezing or? No, I've never gotten any cons, and there would be no cons because if a corporation can access your stuff without your permission they can really do whatever they want wells fargo bank of america they opened up millions and millions of fake with people's accounts information with people's information okay so <coughs> at what point do we become responsible and protect our own information it starts with us i got you i got you yeah i think that's i think that's one of the what i'm hearing is just the recurring theme of being bold having courage having the audacity to like you said bet on yourself mm -hmm. Right, and the information is there. It is. It was here before I came off the plane, bro. <laughs> I'm 13 years old <clears throat> to this country. One of the things that I realize is it, it may feel like it's new to us, but this is something that other groups and other cultures, they learning this stuff at the dinner table. Oh, our counterparts know this stuff. They <clears throat> do sure. know this stuff. And that's why people, we... We, we've been misdirected to believe that riches and wealth is money. While it is a factor, it's not the factor. Mm. Riches and wealth is information. It's that knowledge, that specialized knowledge that families have curated for years that's been passed down mm -hmm. in the household. That's why we got to normalize credit conversations in our homes again. We got to normalize financial literacy. We need to normalize these, these conversations in our household so we can change a credit score of our zip codes. I got you. If there was, 
if if there was this one mindset, right, one perspective that you could leave on the listeners, what would that be? One perspective, one mindset. And for those of you that are watching, yes, I do drink with my pinky up. <laughs> <laughs> um, belief. And I know earlier you said something about belief. but You see, the belief that I have in myself, bruv, is that I can do anything at all. And when a person start putting that level of confidence, that level of trust, mm -hmm. that level of it got to work or it got to work, that type of belief in themselves, they'll realize that, yo, I got incredible uh, swimming skills. Because now, not only am I learning how to swim because of the belief that I have in myself, I'm going to keep my head above water. I'm going to tread this water. And that is going to lead to you now wanting more. Mm. I need to become successful. I need to be wealthy. I need to put my family in a position that they no longer are financially dependent on a system, but we are now independently financially set and we can fund our own lifestyle. We can become our own banks. We can acquire rental property. We too can pay no taxes because of business and owning real estate. Because mm. it's all possible. Absolutely. But if a person doesn't have that type of belief in themselves that it is possible for me, like just right now, repeat after me, it is possible for me. I did not come from a rich family, but a rich family is coming from me. When we own these identities, you see that you start morphing into a different person. Because if you can look up, you can get up. And it's not over until I win. Like that type of mentality. Put those in your programming and you'll be surprised the type of person you become. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's game. That's real. That's for real. Um, oh, that's a good episode. Before we, oh, this, this is going to go crazy. Episode. Before we get out of here, get the people the information one mm. more time and let them know where they can find you. All right, so for me, um, you can find me on Instagram, DoraineDelevante.com. Uh, I mean, you can find me at Doraine Delevante. That's D-A-R-A-I-N-E-D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E -E 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 on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, on YouTube. Go to the YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on the YouTube. Make sure... You can carve out an hour. You can do it an hour a day. Get up one hour earlier because we make time for the things and people that we want. And if you feel like your credit is not important, well, keep living an expensive life of bad credit. Whether, whether you do it or not, I'm still good. And you have the information now. You cannot say anymore, nobody told me this because you cannot unhear what you just heard. What you do with this information now is entirely up to you. So we got to start holding people accountable. So for those of you that are watching, let me see. If you are going to hold yourself accountable, let me see y'all drop the word accountable in the chat because we'll know who wants to hold or who is going to hold themselves accountable and who's going to take action. For those of you that's going to take action on your life Today, this week, this month, this season, this new year, this year, if you are going to take action, drop the word execute in the chat because now you cannot lie to yourself. You must be true to your word. Use the resources that you have. Use the resources that I just gave you. For less than $100, you can start doing this thing right now. So your success is completely dependent on your level of execution. How much does it mean to you? Are you committed to your future? Because any area in your life where they're not commitment, it will die. You need to commit and be true to your word so you can move on to the next phase of your life. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be a good I appreciate you. Appreciate you. You asked some really good questions. Hey, listen, this man. This was a really try. great conversation. Nah, we got to get to it. 
Um, so y'all know I'm Dewan Matungo on everything. Um, use the resources. We're going to drop links in the chat to everything that he shared. Make sure that you tap in with him, and we're going to catch you on the next part. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.